4-2 today, page 231 in your Algebra 2 textbook, talking about quadratic equations. We're going to solve them today by graphing. And so uh, this is something that I'm going to show you on here, how to graph in the TI calculator and make those graphs work for us. And then uh, we're just going to look at some graphs in the book. This is also something in Desmos that would, uh, that would be pretty simple for you to do. And so I don't think today is going to be too bad, but when we're done, you ought to be able to solve you know, a parabola or a quadratic equation by graphing and then kind of deal with maybe where the solutions might be just looking at a graph. Even if sometimes it's hard to tell exactly uh, what the solution is, you might be able to take a really, really good educated guess. And so we're going to kind of look at that. Uh, don't think this is going to be too long today at all, but right here on page 231, it, it walks you back through what standard form for a quadratic equation is. We talked about that in 4-1, all right? We talked in 4-1 about vertex and Axis symmetry, we talked about max and min value, domain and range. And so kind of, I would say one of the last bits of a parabola that we need to talk about today are the x-intercepts. And, and we actually have two different names for those besides x-intercepts. So we can call them x-intercepts, or we can call them roots, or we can call them zeros. And so how you solve a quadratic equation is by finding the x-intercepts. Okay, it's really, really simple. So take a look at this. They graph right here, again, on page 231 x squared minus x minus 6, and you can see that the graph crosses. There's one x-intercept at negative 2, and one of them is at 3. And those are the two answers. In fact, they write it right here. The x-intercepts are negative 2, 3, and they come down here and write negative 2 and 3 are the roots of the equation. What they've done up here in blue is um, they've showed you how to plug in those values and get 0 for the y, thus showing that the zeros are the same. So zeros, roots, and x-intercepts all mean the same thing for our parabola, okay? So no matter how they ask for it, we should be able to find it. Let's go ahead and flip the page. I'm on page 232 at the top. So it says solve that equation, x squared minus 3x minus 4 equals 0 by graphing. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and write this. Even though it's pretty simple, I'm going to walk you through the calculator how to do this. So x squared minus 3x minus 4 equals 0, and we're going to solve this by graphing. Um, one thing to make sure, it does have to be in standard form, so everything has to be on one side of the equal sign, or you have to have it equal to 0, all right? So we're going to go to the calculator, and we're going to plug it into y equals. And I'm going to go x squared minus 3x minus 4, okay? Plug it in, real simple to do. Go check the graph, all right? So I'll get a graph that's doing something like that. Now, when it's a whole number solution, it's really pretty easy to tell. And I'll tell you this, it's even easier to do in Desmos, all right? But I do want to show you how the calculator will help you find this point right here. So we're going to go second, trace. And so we've used this intersect function before, all right? When we were finding when two lines intersected, what we're going to do to find the roots or the x-intercepts is we're going to find the zeros, okay? Now, the only thing you have to be able to do to find zeros, if I want to find that zero, take your cursor there, but don't hit enter yet, okay? This question is going to show up that says left bound. So what you need to do is go to your x-intercept, hit left a couple of times, and hit enter. So we're going to go to the left of where that root is. I'm going to go back to my root and then right a couple of times, two or three times, and hit enter when it said right bound. And when it said guess, I'm going to come back here and hit enter. And it tells us right there that one of our zeros is that x equals negative 1. Now notice, okay, if I'm going to write it as an ordered pair, that would be negative 1, 0. I'm just going to list them out. So the first one, or the, the, the one on the left, is at negative 1. We're going to go find this other one using the same process. Second, trace. I know it's hard to see trace. It's right there with the calc or over here next to graph. I'm going to hit 2. Now, this time i got to go around to my other 0 or my other root. So I'm going to get the cursor right there close to it. Okay? It says left bound, so now I'm going to go left a couple times. Just make sure and hit enter. Now, right bound, i got to go back to my root and then right a few. Hit enter. And get back there right close to the root. Hit enter again. Okay? Now, this, you're like, what is that? That's a, that's a 0. Okay? That's 1, all right, with 12 zeros in front of it. So that's what that, that's just scientific notation. It's just how the TI calculators work. You can be confident that your roots here or your zeros are in negative one and four. Don't put those in parentheses because it's not an ordered pair. The ordered pair answers would be negative one zero, right, and then four zero. 
Okay, so there's a couple different ways to write it. The other way that you might see this, this may be something that shows up in Alex, all right, is that you have to write it just like this, okay? So we're going to write and put a little bracket, and this means all x's such that, so it's x with a little line coming down, that x equals negative 1 and 4, and then do you another little bracket, okay? So any of these three answers, any of them, okay, you can write these any of these ways. Okay, the easiest one's right there, and Alex, pay attention to how they want you to write this, but it's not bad at all, okay? One thing I would definitely write down in your notes, page 232, this key concept box. It shows you an example of when you can only have one solution for a quadratic. That would be when the vertex lies on the x-axis. You just solved one that had two solutions, but there's just an example, and it doesn't matter if it's a smiley or a frowny. We still look at solutions where the graph crosses the x-axis. So right here is an example of two. And one thing we will deal with later in this chapter is what happens with and how do you find an answer when there are no x-intercepts, okay? Because there's still a way to come up with a solution there. It's just a little bit different. All right, I'm going to jump down to example two, and I'm not even going to uh, put this in the calculator. It says solve this by graphing. Now, one thing that I will do to make sure that we're good is it says 14 minus x squared equals negative 6x plus 23. We've got to get everything to one side of the equal sign. Since our x squared is on the left, generally I will move everything towards that. All right? So I need to move this 6x over. So I've got 14 minus x squared plus 6x equals 23. I'm going to now subtract 23 and get it over here. So this is negative 9 minus x squared plus 6x equals 0. Now that's funny looking, so I'm going to put it in order. Remember, quadratic term first, then linear term, then constant. So we're good right there. One thing you can do, because the roots are not affected by the way the graph opens, we would go ahead and flip all of these signs and say x squared minus 6x plus 9 equals zero, and we would go from there. All right, so that's a little trick. That's going to help us when we factor, uh, which is coming up in the very near future, all right? But that would be getting everything on one side of the equal sign and getting it in standard form. And then you can see the graph right here. There is only one x-intercept, and it's at three. We call that a double root, all right? But the answer here would just be x equals three, and we're just looking at the graph to see that. Again, TI calculator or Desmos is great. If you get up here to the top of page 233, you can see this graph does not have an x-intercept. For us, we would put no real solution or no solution right now. All right? So that's what's happening. The last thing that I'm going to show you without doing in the notes, and this is something you might see in ConnectEd. It's extremely easy. It says solve this one by graphing. It says if exact roots cannot be found, state the consecutive integers between which the roots are located. That just means the consecutive big numbers or whole numbers, okay? So all we've got to do, like if you see right here, a little bit tough to see in the book, but if you open on 233, you can see it. That root is between 0 and 1, and so that's all you would list. You'd say, hey, this root's between 0 and 1. That's a connected thing. Alex is going to want you to go find the solution, so you can use Desmos to do that, okay? Something that I think that you'll be, uh, be good at. Over here, let me see where this one is. This is one, two, three, four. That's between five and six, and we would just write between five and six. All right, pretty simple stuff in 4-2, stuff that you can be successful at, as always, and with anything. If you have any questions anytime during this, anytime after this, please come up and see me. I'm in here during lunch if you need some help as well. Thank you.